Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar on the new i1 Pro 3. Presenting today is Jay Calbley, the product manager for the i1 Pro 3. We also have Kevin Amat, one of our application support specialists, available to answer some questions and jump in as needed. I'm Robert Grotans, the Global Technical Marketing Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. A few things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel. We'll have time to answer just a few questions at the end. If we don't get to your question, we'll have someone follow up with you afterwards. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link to it so you can review it later at your convenience. So with that, I will turn it over to Jay to kick things off. Thanks. So uh, real quick, uh, what we're gonna go through today is, is what's new with the i1 Pro 3. Um, talk about some of the, the, the i1 Pro 3 tools uh, and different models. Um, features and benefits in, in upgrading and, and using an i1 Pro 3. And then we'll go through Q&A at the end. Uh, i1s have been, uh, uh, sorry, i1s are the, are the top selling spectrophotometers in history. There's more i1s out there. Than, than all the other spectrophotometers in the market combined. Uh, they're used uh, uh, predominantly in the print market uh, with, uh, with uh, front end rips with, for uh, color profiling, linearization, and, and there's a lot of applications where people just use them to, to, to measure color for, for different applications in addition to profiling and linearization. Um, new features with the i1 Pro 3. There's a full, full spectrum LED illumination, so no more tungsten light source um, with that single scan measurement. So you don't have to do one pass for visible, one pass for UV. i1 Pro 3 supports smaller patch sizes, which means more patches per page. Uh, support for automation with the i1 IO generation three. We've made it a lot easier to clean the device uh, and i1 Pro 3s also support super, super high bright displays for measurement. We also added a, a Kensington lock port to the back of it. So the same kind of locking port that you have on a laptop. So you can secure it if you don't want it to, to move around. So there's two new models. There's an i1 Pro 3 and an i1 Pro 3 Plus. The i1 Pro 3 Plus is a large aperture device. We hadn't had a large aperture i1 uh, historically. So the, the uh, standard aperture or normal i1 Pro 3 has a four and a half millimeter aperture, which is the same as the i1 Pro 2 and the original i1. The i1 Pro 3 Plus has an eight millimeter aperture, which is pretty gigantic. The i1 Pro 3 Plus also supports polarization. There's a polarization filter that ships with it to allow you to measure in, in M3. So comparing uh, features between i1 Pro 2, i1 Pro 3, i1 Pro 3 Plus, um, again, note the, the difference in patch sizes. One advantage of the i1 Pro 3 is it can go down to six millimeter patches and actually have a higher sampling rate with six millimeter pat patches than it does with seven millimeter patches on the i1 Pro 2. Um, maximum uh, luminance support, so for, for bright displays, is up to 5,000 nits or candela per square meter uh, for both the i1 Pro 3 models. The sampling rate, is at 400 hertz, so double uh, what it was for i1 Pro 2. Maximum scan length is the same between the Pro 2 and the Pro 3, but on the Plus, because it has a large aperture, we've made it much, much longer. Both the i1 Pro 3 models have a, a full spectrum LED light source. So with the elimination of the tungsten bulb, <coughs> you get much more thermal stability in the device because the LEDs don't generate as much heat. As well, you don't get some of the drift issues over time that you get with a tungsten light bulb to the carbon burn uh, or, or temperature changes. Um, as well, the LEDs uh, don't have a filament burn like, like, a, like a, a, a tungsten light bulb would. Uh, with that uh, uh, LED light source, we also have single pass scanning. With the i1 Pro 2, if you wanted to scan M1 or M2, uh, you'd have to, uh, do one, one pass for visible spectrum, one pass for UV. With both the i1 Pro 3 models, you get single pass scanning. 
So it uh, effectively cuts your scan time in half for M1 or M2, which is pretty cool. Easy clean filter, the, the tubus or the snout on the i1 Pro 3 comes off very easily and there's a, um, a new filter design. So if there is any contamination uh, on, your, on your filter glass, you can clean it really, really quickly and easily. And again, as I mentioned, the i1 Pro 3 Plus also comes with a uh, polarization filter to support polarized um, uh, measurements. i1 Pro 3 Plus also supports uh, transmission scanning. So if you wanna work with backlit materials, uh, you, you, you can do that with the i1 Pro 3 Plus. <clears throat> All the i1 devices support what we call virtual aperture technology. So when you're scanning uh, color patches, uh, the, the i1 will automatically detect a patch and measure, uh, measure, 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 measure inside that patch um, and average uh, the patches together, giving you effectively a big, long virtual aperture. So the longer your patch size, the more measurements and the more uh, accuracy you're going to get in terms of a, a, a homogenized uh, virtual aperture measurement. Uh, another cool improvement with the i1 Pro 3 versus i1 Pro 2 is it measures at 400 hertz. So even with small patches, you're going to get more accurate, more consistent measurements with an i1 Pro 3 because effectively it, it's doubled. Uh, we've doubled the, the, uh, uh, the sample rate. Uh, just a summary of the of the the patch sizes <coughs> with i1 Pro 3 standard aperture where we've enabled six millimeter patches, which mean, again means more patches per page, uh, fewer pages to print and scan, and you'll you can scan much quicker because of that. We still have uh, the same licensing structure as we did with the i1 Pro 2, so there's an i1 Basic i1 Photo and i1 Publish. The i1 Basic comes with licenses in the device uh, for printer QA and uh, display calibration. Uh, the, the Photo adds licenses for RGB printer support. And then the i1 Publish has the full licensing setup, which includes RGB, CMYK Plus printer, display, printer QA, pretty much everything. If you have an existing i1 Pro 2 or original i1 and it's a publish mode and has all the licenses in it, you don't need to buy another publish device. You can buy an i1 Basic Pro 3 or i1 Basic Pro 3 Plus and transfer the licenses right in i1 Profiler. You just plug in your, your original i1, plug in your new i1 Pro 3, or sorry, i1 Pro 2 um, and your, your i1 Pro 3 and, and transfer licenses. Um, there's a transfer license function circled in red on the on the right there, and that would do that for you. If you have an original I1, you need to contact our application support team, and they can help you transfer the licenses. So go through some of the cool new features. Again, the, the full-spectrum LED light source is a big deal. It enables um, much more, uh, much better device reliability. Um, much better repeatability, uh, measurement to measurement, much more accuracy. Uh, as well, uh, uh, it's, it's more robust than a, than a tungsten light source. And it's, it's what gives us the, the capability to have uh, single pass scanning, which cuts your scan times in half as well. So again, single pass scanning, um, instead of having to do one pass for visible, one pass for UV, um, it gets it all in one pass, which is, a huge time saver. And this is true when you use it on an I.O. as well. Smaller patch sizes, again, more patches per target. Um, more patches per, per page means, like it says, less media burn, a much faster workflow. Uh, the I1 uh, and I1 Pro 2, I1 Pro 3 have what I think is probably the most elegant automation solution in the market. It's the I.O. table. The I.O. table is what we call a SCARA arm or robot arm that allows you to put your I1 in it and have it automatically measure uh, targets for, for profiling or linearization, whatever you want. Um, the new version of the I.O. table, the I1 I.O. 3, has been uh, re-engineered to be more, much more accurate um, and uh, reliable long term. The I.O. 3 table uh, 
uh, is only usable with the i1 Pro 3 and i1 Pro 3 Plus. So if you have an i1 uh, Pro 2 and you want an i1 Pro 3 with an I.O. table, there's not an upgrade path because of all the changes we've made. You'd need to buy a new I.O. table. back up on this. Um, if, you, if you're used to the I.O., you, you'll note the glider rings that are in it. When we ship the I.O. 3s, they come with glider rings for the, I, for the I.1 Pro 3 Plus as well as the I.1 Pro 3. Uh, here's a shot of the, the new tubus and filter design. You see the little lock icons there. You just rotate the, the, the snout or the tubus of the device to the unlock position, pull it off, and that filter that, that's being held there also locks into that tubus. So you can pop that out and clean it at any time. Again, for high brightness displays, we'll support displays up to 5,000 nits. Um, most of the monitors that are out there today aren't close to that, but, but they're coming into the market. Um, uh, for something like a gaming display, those will go up to 1,250 nits today. Um, there are higher brightness monitors coming out. There are already LFDs up in the, in the or large format displays up into the 7,000 nit range. But this will cover virtually all uh, uh, displays that are out there today. We, we are rolling out a trade-in program or trade-up program. Um, it'll go live uh, in the next couple of days on xrightradein.com. If you have an old i1, whether it's an i1 Pro 2 or original i1, after you go out and buy your new I1 from, from an authorized x right dealer and fill out the form on x tradein.com and we'll rebate you $300 for the old I1. Same with an, an I.O. table. So if you have an I1 I.O. table, Gen 1 or Gen 2, you can get another $300 um, as part of our, our trade-up and trade-in program. And that's where we are right now. If there's any questions, um, we'll take those now. If you need more information, uh, you can go to xright.com. If you have questions, uh, you can uh, email into CM support or color management support at xright.com for qu questions or, or support. Yep. So I see one question here already. If you do have a question, feel free to submit one. And again, um, CM support at xright.com. Kevin Amat monitors that and his team. So they'll be happy to answer any questions that we don't get to. Uh, so one question I see that we got is, will my current I1 IO work with the I1 Pro 3? So good question. Um, so oh. uh, no, it will not. Uh, the I1, as Jay said earlier, the I1 Pro 3s have to be, if you want an automated uh, um, process, then uh, you'd have to go with the I1 IO 3. The I1 IO uh, first generation and IO 2 uh, will only work with the I1 Pro 2s and the I1 Pro 1s. So uh, it will, the, the I1 Pro 3 is dimensionally different, so it won't fit into the I1 IO I1 holder. So, uh, so the answer is no. Next question. I think you touched on this a little bit. Um, Someone wants clarity on, is there an upgrade path for the i1 Pro 2 Publish? Yes. Uh, you can, if you get an i1, if you have an i1 Pro 1 or i1 Pro 2 that has Publish or Photo licensing, you can buy a i1 Pro 3 basic model, either the plus or the, the smaller aperture, and you can just transfer the licensing. Uh, keep in mind that after you transfer the license, uh, you can also trade in the older i1 Pro and get another $300 off. Um, now, there is not a direct path to transfer licensing from the i1 Pro 1 to the I, all the way up to the i1 Pro 3. There, there is in the software, you can go from the i1 Pro 2 to the i1 Pro 3. If you have an i1 Pro 1, first generation, rev A through D, and you want to upgrade to an i1 pro 3 and you want to transfer the licensing you'd have to contact us at x right technical support for us to do a manual transfer with you do you still recommend a yearly recertification we do 
Uh, that's recommended. Yep. Annual recertification. How long do we know how long the trade in program is going for? Right now we've got it scheduled to go through the end of June. Um, someone's asking about the inventory status um, of the new product. Do we currently have it in stock and ready to ship? Yep, I1 Pro 3 all models and I1 Pro 3 Plus all models are in stock, um, both in the US and in Europe. The I1 Pro 3s are actually manufactured in our factory in Regensdorf, Switzerland. Um, so, yeah, they're ready to go. Is there any advantage for display calibration to using the larger 8 millimeter aperture? Yeah, what we found in applications uh, just from uh, experimenting with it is uh, profiling with the large aperture, we seem to be getting much smaller, lower DEs in the display quality after profiling. Uh, so uh, from our experience in applications, uh, it looks like from gathering more data with each measurement is improving the uh, display profiles using the large aperture. We'll take one more question for today. Um, when do we expect it to be integrated with other profiling software such as Onyx and Caldera? So um, most of the partners that we've been working with for years have had the SDK for it already. Um, I don't know the status of the Onyx integration. For Caldera, the i1 Pro 3 Plus is included in version 13. Um, i1 Pro 3 standard aperture and IO are scheduled to be uh, included with version 13.1, which is due out the end of this month. We get this question quite a bit in applications, and uh, we always direct people back to the OEM vendor, back to the software vendor, because and number one, a lot of these, or most of them are paid upgrades, and a lot of people are on different uh, levels. And so uh, directing them back uh, will let them get to the software vendor to find out which uh, version they have to upgrade to when they do add the iMoon Pro 3s. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. This was meant to be just a quick overview today. We have a few questions we didn't get to, so I'll send those over to Kevin, and he'll follow up with you offline. Again, thank you for attending today. Um, you will receive our uh, recording so you can see the tables that Jay had on screen and get all of that information. Have a great day and thanks again.